So I've got a large plasma cutter here I'm working on. This one's a Hypertherm Max 40 CS. And um, it doesn't work, supposedly. I haven't seen it work, but I hear it doesn't. And about all I have on it so far, uh, I downloaded a schematic so that I can figure out maybe why it doesn't work. Uh, half the screws are missing in it, so it looks like uh, somebody's been working on it. This one uh, runs on 220 volts, and uh, it can cut up to 3 8 inch steel or aluminum. And it's a pretty beefy unit. It weighs about 180 pounds. Pretty heavy. They don't make these anymore. The newer version uh, that's equivalent to this power is very small. This one's a transformer based. So, you know, it should, uh, these kind of things are kind of bulletproof, really. They're very simple. But I believe just recently they stopped making consumables for it. But you could probably change the uh, torch, the head, because the you know, plasma cutters all kind of work the same way. So what I'm going to do first is open it up and take a look inside. It's got an air regulator here on the side. Uh, it regulates it down to 60 PSI. So I've never had this open, I'm not really sure. What I'm going to see. It's very dirty. I'll move this in so you can get a closer look. I need to get a closer look myself. There's a, this is a huge transformer here. Another little smaller one here. Here's the fan. I'll probably roll this outside and uh, blow all this dust out. It's got um, capacitors and resistor. I see a thermal switch, more capacitors. A lot of times these will go bad. These electrolytics, they only last maybe 20 years at the most. So it's possible these caps are bad. That would be my first suspicion. But it could be something simple. There's a few interlocks in this device that would prevent it from working. And so I'm gonna confirm those are functional before I tackle. There's not much of a printed circuit here. And I don't see any any obvious damage, but I really have to look at it very closely first. And then I'll go get a voltmeter and start checking it out. There's a contactor there. Looks like the contacts or burned, maybe. So I, I might go, might have to replace that. This is a current sensing device there. So this one's dated 1992. This is the last, uh, this is when this, uh, this board was tested. More capacitors. Roll around this side so you can see some more detail there. IDC insulation displacement connectors. This uh, can be problematic right there. They just don't, uh, they're not reliable. 
I'm in mean, an industrial application. There's a lot going on there in the back too. I'm going to have to take the back panel off. I got my uh, voltmeter and I'm going to be uh, checking resistance. First thing I'm going to do is just check these fuses out here and make sure they're good. That fuse is good. That one's good. Check this fuse up here. That's good. That one's good, sort of. Yeah, it's reading good, okay. Now I'm gonna check, this is the torch, the control, and this one has a, a safety interlock in it with the, if the cap gets unscrewed, it won't allow the uh, plasma cutter to work. And there's also a button here that starts the plasma cutter. So there's two controls in here. And they come out of this cable here. This is the uh, the cable that goes to the torch. There's quite a few things in it. But I see uh, it's labeled right here's the start button. So I can just read across that. And right now I've got it open. But if I press the button, it should go, it should close. So that's working. When I press the button, it closes. And this the next one up here is the cap safety interlock. That one should just be closed all the time, and it is. If I unscrew this, then that would open up. So uh, it looks like the interlock and the torch is working and the control is working. The fuses I've checked are good. Uh, I'm also gonna check this uh, sensor here for the air pressure. I need to plug in, uh, compressed air or nitrogen into this input and set this dial to 60 PSI. And if uh, the machine won't allow it to start, if it doesn't have 60 PSI here. So this looks like a normal, like a pressure sensing switch that's open until you apply pressure. So if I look at it now, I'm expecting this to read open. And it does. So I'm going to go uh, hook air up to this and see if I can get this switch to close. So I've got an air line here. Plug that in. Luckily it fits. I'm going to turn the air on now. I don't know what happened there. But uh, that could be why it blew up. Need to investigate that issue there. Let's see what's going on with this thing. Oh, here we go. Somebody had opened it to drain the water out. So I'll try it again. It's quickly uh, bleeding my air. I got. I'm just got a tank on it. So there's an air leak somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Come on. Move you out of the way a minute. I'm just running a little portable tank, so when I plug, I don't have a lot of air. It's coming out of here as if this uh, valve is 
um, stuck open. So, so I'm getting air all the time through this, uh, through this cutter here. And I wonder if that might be the problem. So this valve is uh, not functioning. So what I'm going to do is uh, hook up my voltmeter here across this six sensor. If you're running this thing with earplugs, you might not have ever even hear that. And so I might have to go recharge. I'm hooked across this pressure switch. So now when I uh, apply air, that should close. And it is closing. So it is sensing and closing. I'm wondering if maybe this valve is normally open and it's pulled in to close. That could be a possibility. Although I'm not sure why they would do it that way. Maybe for safety. So the air is flowing normally. So that could be a possibility that when I turn this thing on and energize it, maybe this valve will shut. So uh, I don't know for sure. Uh, I, I can look this up and see. There is a number on it there. But that could be a possibility. It could be okay. That part of it. So I did some uh, initial checking and I haven't found anything wrong yet. And so soon I'll be uh, plugging it in and doing some voltage measurements to see if I can detect where the problem is. But, uh, for now, the initial testing or the initial inspection hasn't revealed any issue.